I was born in Honolulu, Hawaii, so I'm you know, born and raised. Um, went off to the mainland, went off to Boston to go study nuclear physics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. I was really into it. I was all about environmental technologies and energy technologies and basically bringing in the next holy grail, which was fusion energy into the world. That plan got a little bit sidetracked because I don't think we were ready for it politically and economically. So I went to San Francisco after college and did business consulting just for a little while, just to learn about business, to further my education. So I did the business consulting thing for a while and there in San Francisco, that's where I was introduced to slam poetry. Um, it was one of those, you know, dark late nights where I just stumbled across the scene and I was mind blown. Like after experiencing sound poetry, I went home and I wrote for, I don't know, for the next couple of days, you know? And I was hooked, I had the bug. And you know, a couple of other things happened to me along the way, but ultimately I decided it was time. It was time to come back home and do the art thing, you know, contribute to my community and, and do the poetry thing for a while, you know? So I did, and I came back. I spent the first year sort of in incubation, I wrote, uh, uncontrollably, you know, I was hiking, surfing, writing, and in that process, I was able to spit out a couple of, um, you know, poems. And from there, like the process got started, and I just, I just really, um, the slam poetry thing started taking off, and uh, I started first Thursdays, which is the slam that we have here in Hawaii um, on this island, Oahu. In a very short time, it became the largest poetry slam in the world, and it's continuing. It's, it's strong. Um, the scene is growing, opportunities are uh, unfolding with each day. Why is it so popular? Slam poetry is popular in, in Hawaii. Oh, gosh, I mean really it's a function of our community. Um, our arts community here is strong, we support each other. And more than anything, I think it's cultural. Here in Hawaii, we're good at listening. We're also good at speaking because, I mean, we come from an oral tradition, right? I mean, like, you know, if you want to start talking about ancient Hawaiians, I mean, they didn't, I mean, everything that they, they did was through chant, was through uh, the, the oral word. And so really, we're just, we're just continuing on that tradition, you know? You provide the mic for passionate words and, you know, if you build it, they will come kind of a thing, you know? <laughs> I mean, I say do it. Just do it, you know? I mean, get over it. Get over the nerves, get over the, all that stuff and just grab the mic and see what happens, you know? The worst thing that can happen is that, I don't know, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You're not going to die. You're going to be up there and you're going to share your stuff and maybe someone in the audience will agree with what you're saying, you know? Maybe they'll disagree. Maybe there'll, there'll be dialogue afterwards. Who knows? As long as you share that stuff that's going on in your head, you can't go wrong, you know? I mean, it's your, it's your message. It's what you stand for. And so if you're going to share what you stand for, then stand by it, you know? Be proud. Uh, you know, of course it was hard work. It's hard work to, to make sure that people know what's up and know that this is happening. And like, you know, our attendance is, you know, it ranges, but I mean, it, it's usually about 600, 650 people, something like that. And new poets, we see new poets all the time. We see new faces in the audience. For people to experience the words and then go away and have their lives be enriched, it's all worth it, you know? And through The Wild Hawaiian, I found out how much, how much love and sharing and just laid back to backedness uh, Henry projects to this world. I mean, working with working with this project has been so easy. He's given me um, complete like room and freedom to to do what I do, and I see him giving that same freedom to the other musicians, to the crew, to the lighting. I mean, like everything. He just he just he kicks back and does his thing. He's very professional, but he's so laid back, and it's just such a pleasure to work with him. You know. He surrounds himself with really awesome people. All of our interactions, were, we, we sort of went through this journey like a family, you know? I mean, like, it was all chill, it was all high fives, it was all hugs, and there was no, there was never any tension. Even, you know, on the night of performance, I mean, like, those shows, it was so laid back, it was so aloha, you know? And I found that to be a, a real treat. I was surprised that, because you know, I mean like, I've been, a, I've been a part of other productions where it's, it's really high stress and it's in, intense. And, and, and those productions were nowhere near the level of what this thing was, you know? Um, so I found that such an intense level, you can still maintain your peacefulness.